What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mark Summers, Major Links, MajorSouse.com, and I've got some, I'm making a special video here, because I wanted to share some stuff with you. Um, earlier today, on December 8th, um, AMD went ahead and they released their new Crimson software, the Crimson Relive Edition, um, which came with some pretty awesome updates to their GPU. Um, something called, like, Radeon Shield, which is supposed to kind of help with some power management and keep some cool, um, help cooling with, um, GPUs. It's added some more Wattman capabilities to older GPUs that are out there. But the one thing that it came with, the one thing that I'm pretty impressed with, um, that I got a chance to play with early today, was um, the actual ReLive um, features that they built in. ReLive is kind of like what their built-in streaming service or like streaming um, system that they're building into their own driver software. They kind of give you the same capabilities as like um, Xbox One, PS4 built-in streaming, or kind of what Microsoft is planning to do with the creative update um, that's coming out later that will um, kind of build in streaming features for their Windows 10 UD UWP games to uh, be streamed natively to Beam.pro. Um, so yeah, this is their... So yeah, they've got this thing in a real live where you can stream to either Twitch or to YouTube. Um, hmm, kind of strange that they leave beam.pro or hitbox out but um so yeah so they got stuff here so this is um actually some footage that i recorded um <clears throat> with everything set to high um like so like all the settings set to high with ambient occlusion anti-aliasing and motion blur turned off Kill. um and as you see here and like, so i have the frame rate locked at 60 frames per second because my tv can only get up to 60 megahertz so i can only see 60 frames per second on on any display that i have um so yeah as you can see here you know it's pretty good um again like for this being on high there's still some artifacting issues that are um, showing up similar to what you would normally see on twitch um when i was watching this uh, footage on twitch like it looked pretty good like for someone who was just streaming you know from one pc running a core i5 um 6500 with an arcs 480 I mean, it's, it looks pretty good. I mean, granted, that's, I wish it could be better, but um, for what I had and for what I'm trying to do, this actually looks fantastic. And it did not take much of a hit on the pro on the processing. Like, it looked good on my end. It looks good. It looks good on the stream. And it's looking fantastic here. So, um, as you can see, yeah, still a little bit of artifacting and stuff like that, but it's something that you're trying to get over if you want, like, just to stick it up. Oh my god, it's got to look perfect. It's got. Everybody's gotta see I see on my TV. Oh my god, like, I, I can't believe it. Um, yeah, like even for that, like so this is still the streaming bit, uh, or just the recording of the streaming, which is still pretty fantastic. Like with OBS being able to do um, streaming and recording at the same time, there tends to be some um, hardware constraints. Like you know, like oh no, your encoders are loaded. Um, granted, when I've done some tests with OBS, which um, I'll get to in a second. <laughs> Um, while also running um, Threat neutralized. real life while well, recording, I never ran into, I haven't run into issues lately, and I'm not sure if Quick Scene, you know, the Intel's Quick Scene has kind of like, you know, worked itself out, if that's okay, but, uh, yeah, like, you know, here, like, I ran into no issues, I couldn't see any issues, um, and it's not like there's, like, some interface to let me know how the stream is going, if I'm dropping frames or anything, which, it's something I wish I could. I wish Relive did have. I wish there was a standalone program for Relive, and it wasn't like the Xbox app thing with Game VR, where it's like I have to hit a shortcut and then gives me a little notification at the top. You see the top left is the timer, and um, later on when I get to the recordings, like there's the straight vanilla recordings of the streams, so you'll see note you'll see a notification. Like, hey, you're now recording or whatever. Um, yeah, I wish there was a, I wish there was kind of like something like OBS, like XSplit, where you can kind of see, um, you know, how your team is doing, kind of get like a preview, and also like just some feedback. And who knows, there may be some, it's just that there was no need for them to give it to me because everything was working properly. I'm pretty sure in OBS, if I had like the most bomb ass stream, um, if I had the most bomb ass um, video, or the bomb ass stream, it wouldn't tell me anything. So yeah, I'm gonna go here. So I go ahead, I went ahead and cut so I can show you the um, the max setting. So I'm going, I'm coming in here now, and I'm going to bump everything up. As you can see, everything was high in that previous one. 
One See, I've bumped up the text quality to um, extra. We'll Shadow map quality is going up to extra. And then um, turning on the um, filmic anti-aliasing, extra ambient occlusion, and always on motion blur. <clears throat> so I'll go in here, com confirm the settings, and I guess just wait for Nuketown to be destroyed. Alright, so verify settings. I went ahead and I sped up a little bit to go through the menu and stuff like that. So this is um, the game running at max everything. The stream is still going. Hostile down. Uh, so yeah, all this was done on the stream. As you can see, it's still holding it. I mean, just it's just holding on at 60. There are still a couple of dips that go like at about like 50, 58, 55 or whatever. Um, but it, like it recovers. Okay, it's going at 62. It's like Really, when somebody is dying right in front of my face, that's when the drops happen. But again, like this is still holding at an almost constant 60 frames per second. Like that, like some, like said, sometimes it would, it would have dipped to like about, like about mid high 40s or whatever. But again, look at it; it's just holding at 60, which is amazing. Like even for this 2D screen, there is no, like barely any issues. Like this is something that you know. I'm just, you have that occasional dip, you have that occasional dip, but it's holding fairly well, and that's I, I found like that was, I, I felt like that was amazing for um what's being done here. Now, as you can see, like there is no overlays as normally I would have an overlay when I'm streaming. Um, Amber Relive, there won't be any overlays here. You can set a custom overlay. Um, I haven't looked in that. I haven't looked into it too much, but from what I understand, with those people, you can like, input like Twitch alerts and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't. For what I understand, it doesn't allow for. No man um, Excuse me, like URL. So like, so that when you have things like donations, follows, hosting, um, and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, even but yeah, again, this is streaming 1080p, 60 frames per second. At max settings, like you saw it, like it's max settings, ultra, the like, ATA listing turn all the way up, EKIA. and the occlusion turn all the way up, motion blur is on, <laughs> and it's holding its own, which is fairly impressive, and I'm like super excited about this. Sort out. Uh, so, yeah, the next thing here, I'm gonna queue uh, up. <laughs> Next video, which is, I believe, recording using Real Life while streaming with ODS. All right, so now we're here. This is so. This is me um, recording Real Life while streaming and doing recording with OBS. Um, I kind of have OBS set up to record as soon as I start streaming. I didn't turn it off, so that could attribute to some of the. The hiccups we're seeing now, as you can see here, it's not. Yeah, with this is with again with everything turned off, with everything turned up. Um, it's barely getting um 50 frames per second. Like it seems like it's hovering at about 45 on average. So I went ahead and I turned some stuff down, and as you see, it's improved a little bit. Um, now we're getting like um about anywhere between the high 40s to uh, about to about 60, hit 60 on occasion. Um, Dead. Apparently, all the shooting is what kind of causes it to dip down a bit, but it looks like it's averaging at about 55 frames per second. We hit a couple of dips there, but um, again, like, gameplay-wise, it still seems like it's doing the job. Um, the excuse me, the anti-alien, I'm uh, not the anti -alien, the artifacting stuff that was being seen during the stream part Flame seems to be gone. Like it, there's still a little bit there, but not a lot. Um, obviously showing the difference between just have just being able to fully record and um, having and then providing kind of an archive of a stream um, almost seeming like it's taking the stream from Twitch and it's like all right here's your offline version like no that's not what I want this is kind of more or less what I want a uh, better um, better experience um, with an off video. Yeah, so you see it's jumping a little bit here and that's mainly because of the fact that I am streaming with OBS. 
um, and also recording with OBS while recording with um, Live. But it's, again, it's still holding its own, which is amazing. Like, I'm shocked at how, like, how well this is doing. Um, for, so it's gotten me to a point where I'm thinking, like, you know, for people with one PC setups, and again, like, this seems to be like a good solution. Like, you know, if you do have your custom overlays, it's great to use OBS, but if you just want your once a stream, but still, then still have kind of like this nice EKI. high depth, um, somewhat great. clear uh, video to be put on YouTube for later on for archiving, you can do that. Again, the um, only issue with Flame that is, is like if you do have overlays, you do have nice alerts and that will get shown and like kind of a lot of that context will be missing if that's you like to have context to your videos um, me, i'm kind of harkening back to the days when i was streaming on xbox and ps4 using their native um equipment native stuff and recording 1080p using the pop pop using elgato um well granted on ps4 and xbox one a lot of that context has been there it wasn't that bad, but this becomes an issue if you do special things on your Twitch streams using um, overlays, using different cameras, and not having that with um, Relive. But if you do, if you don't mind, and you just want to say, hey, I just want the gameplay, like so at least it catches, I don't even know if it catches my voice. Like, this is me recording after, if I'm doing a video in um, Power Director. Uh, the mic was on, the mic was set up to be captured, but none of the streams, Ruin none wasted. of the recordings captured any of my audio. Um, I haven't really posted a job in it because one, this isn't something I'm planning on using too Can't much. Well, actually, I do plan on it, especially as good as this looks right now with stream with OBS and record with VLive, because then I can take my audio from my archive Twitch stream, so yeah, essentially I would record, and even then that's still kind of weird, because like, again, I'm streaming and recording with OBS, and it's taking a kind of a hit on the system when it comes to real live, or at least with the game itself, and possibly with real live, but then I can take that microphone audio, and um, take it to him next time. From, I can take the microphone audio from OBS, and then put it with um, the video that I'm getting from real live here. All right, so the next thing here that I'm showing is, as you can see down at the bottom, it does tell you kind of like um what you use, like what I'm using. I'm using an Intel i5 Core, um, uh, Intel Core i5, uh, 6500 with uh, 16 gigabytes RAM. Again, I'm running an RX 480, and again, you can see at the top left here, and again, like another previous video, it shows that I'm recording, shows how long the video is. Um, Also, it looks like you can see at the top, the um, icon has changed. So now it's kind of showing you that I'm recording as opposed to streaming. I think streaming has a little green icon, if I, re if I recall from earlier in the video. I think it does. Now it's showing a red icon. So now you can see here I am <clears throat> setting everything back up, turning everything on to their highest setting, everything on high or extra, turning up anti-aliasing, ambient occlusion, and motion blur. And now this is the one that kind of blew me away. I decided I go and check it after the fact. And um, so again, as you can see here, I still kept it locked at 60. Just because I'm still afraid that what's going to happen if I try to bump it up, still kind of testing software. Um, one thing I do like I to care. notice too is the fact that <clears throat> it does not capture the activate windows <laughs> watermark that I have on my system. Uh, for those who don't know, I recently bought an uh, NZXT H440, a um, Gigabyte H170 Gen 3 um, motherboard, and of course there's 70, uh, 750 watt gold standard He's dead. power supply. With all of that, and taking all of the stuff from my old PC and putting in this new one, um, while the hard drive and stuff the same, memory, Processing on that wall saying the motherboard wasn't and apparently Windows 10 ties its product key to the motherboard and because I changed the motherboard Windows does not understand that this is still the old and it doesn't understand that I own the same system essentially changing my own motherboard so yeah for me I'm constantly seeing that with Windows 10 so if I was streaming I'm pretty sure if I go back and watch the streams I can see I'm on Windows while playing the game I 
<coughs> verified this, but it's like it's pretty apparent as I'm looking at this right now that actually was just a bear. But looking at this recording, it's not, which is fantastic. Seems like it's getting rid of that. All right, so back to the gameplay now that I've talked my way past a lot of loading. As you can see, this is a straight recording, so I'm Battery not streaming down. here. This is me running just the real live recording feature. 1080 against 1080p 60. Um, I think it's the, I forget what the um, video sample rate is, but it's kind of like the, the default test. I can't remember how to say that. But um, 1080p 60, the game is running at a lock 60 frames per second, so everything is high up. And no dipping. Like it's just maybe a, a slight dip. See, it's a slightly dip back down to 59, but it pops right back up to 60, running perfect. And it's amazing. Um, <clears throat> so I'm putting in some work here. This time. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to move this up. Um, the other All right, so. As you can see here, um, I've gone ahead and I've turned all sync every frame. I've bumped everything up, so it's up to I think it's max of like 240 frames per second, which is four times as much as what my TV gets. And again, you got 240 megahertz um, screens that are out there. So yeah. So this is it. So this is the game being recorded on that free live. Still no streaming on this on this area. Um, and granted, I didn't stream with Relive using these settings. Um, didn't really think about it, but um, I imagine like if I'm recording at this, it should also stream it at this kind of high frame rate. And as you can see here, it's constant. Like it's staying well above 60. I'm actually getting about t almost. Like, it seems like it almost hit twice as much at one point. Right now. But again, this is everything turned up to max settings with an unlocked frame rate. Again, I'm only seeing 60. So again, me locking Going it, down. me locking the GPU at 60 kind of kind of saves processing power. Down. Um, saves a little bit of energy. I don't have to worry about you know maxing something if I'm not even seeing it. Um, but yeah, you've got a system that can push it if you can nice. monitor it, that can get 120, 240 uh, megahertz. Then yeah, knock yourself out. But yeah, for me, on a 60 megahertz um, television. Terminate. This is actually amazing. My shooting is not, but like looking at how the system is handling it, looking at how Relive is handling it, and you can look at the beginning of this video, confirm and kill, and then look at this part here. And you can see there's a, like a stark difference here where the artifacting isn't even an issue anymore. Now, granted, I know I'm not digital foundry. I don't have all the fancy things and all the graphs and shit, but I really thought this was pretty cool. It's something that, you know, like, it's, I'm excited about. Um, again, for, for me, I actually would like to see how this system would handle streaming only with OBS and recording with real live. Um, Another thing that I'm kind of curious about too is That's how the system, like how this kind of system will handle um, like a two PC setup. So if I'm streaming, you know, if I have a streaming PC and then I have my gaming PC, like obviously the Relive software will be running my gaming PC. Um, and I guess like the performance would probably be like amazing for the stream with OBS, but record with Relive because I'll stream with OBS on the coding PC. And record with real live on the gaming PC, and obviously recording. So recording only Assassin. while playing a game is fucking amazing. Um, it's something where like this is really making me, this is really making me feel good for leaving console gaming behind because obviously this is something that I cannot take advantage of on a console. Um, yeah, really, I'm really excited. This is pretty amazing shit like so i didn't even really think that stuff like this could be possible um uh, so kudos to amd for really like they really done some amazing things here it's really excited it really makes me excited kind of as like a small time um, twitch streamer small time content creator obviously i don't do much of anything um like this With is these upgrades 
You never stood a chance. This is fucking dope. I'm really excited. And I can't wait to see what not only myself, but other people can do with this kind of, um, with this technology. Um, it's nice to see, it'd be interesting to see what NVIDIA's got coming up. And it'd be interesting to see what, um, Windows, like what Microsoft is going to do with Windows 10 with the upcoming creators update and whether or not they'll improve some of this stuff here. Um, Yep, yeah, on that note, I'm going to dip out. Of course, this, oh, I should drink some water. Of course, this has been Mark Summers with Major Linux, MajorsHouse.com. Thank you all for tuning in. And all I've got left to say to you guys is peace out.